Hey guys, so I thought I'd make a really quick video. It's 4th of July weekend and I just got my uh, comps for um, Justice League 3. I'm really excited about them. I'm away and uh, my parents have this uh, lake house that uh, they've had since I was about 5 years old. It's sort of a cabin in the woods. Um, but uh, I figured I'd take a look with you, let you see. I hope you're having a great 4th of July weekend. And it's also an interesting kind of peek into my nerd youth here because my parents changed nothing from when I was a kid. So, it looks like I died when I was a child. Anyway, um, oh yeah, my Lincoln Hawk over the top figure is when he turns his hat. He's like a truck, as everyone knows. Common wisdom. Robotech, 1989 Batman figure, original Millennium Falcon, comics, my Dungeons and Dragons past, my handwriting still betrays my Dungeon Master handwriting. My A's are still like that old... It's, uh, it stays with you. It stays with you. Horror comics. Indiana Jones truck. lion -O, Godzilla. Everything. So, anyway. I hope you enjoy. Uh, let's uh, take a quick look at um, the beginning of JL3. Minor spoilers. Okay, so one of the greatest feelings when you're a comic book creator is when you get your comps, right? You get your comics. I just got these. This is JL3. I opened it with my awesome metal pen I got from Brother Greg. Um, I used to have this Batarang that I would open everything with, but me and my kid were throwing it and I lost it. So if whoever, whatever fan made that, if you have another one, it's totally worth getting caught at customs with it all the time. It was amazing. Thank you. So, oh nice. So we have the Jim Lee variant right here. I know I'll be careful. Sorry. Look away. Look away. Okay, we have the Jim Lee variant, and we have Brother Jorge's cover. Let's look at Jorge's because he's my boy. I love Jim, but Jorge is just killing it on this stuff. Okay, so I'm probably not supposed to show you, but now it's a routine, so let's do it. Um, if the last issue, JL2, opened with, with uh, Luthor and talked about how he was never a man to seek the truth, and it sort of chronicled that change, uh, his sort of change of heart, where now he sort of only seeks the truth. This issue opens with Sinestro on Korrigar, back in his young life, before he was a Green Lantern, before he was a Yellow Lantern, um, back when he was sort of a, a great um, uh, intergalactic uh, anthropologist, archaeologist. Um, and uh, it, if that issue was sort of about a character needing, or Luthor needing to uh, recommit to finding the truth. This issue is about someone who already is committed to finding the truth, the truth through history, um, the truth through ex uh, excavation, um, but who uh, knows that sometimes what he finds when he looks is something dark. So it's almost like this arc, what I'm doing is, and total spoiler, I'm just going to spoil everything, um, every issue begins with um, another villain in the Legion of Doom. And in doing so, uh, what I'm trying, we're trying to do is show you kind of an arc told over different characters. Each one discovers something else on this trajectory um, of doom. If Luther is about finding the truth, Sinestro is about seeing the darkness beneath that discovery. Um, Grodd, who's next, is about um, manipulating that darkness and so on. And each thing is countered by what's going on with the superheroes. So it's sort of... Um, Almost a, a combat between justice and doom has told both in the in the opening um, and in the issues themselves. So I hope that makes sense. Here we have Sinestro. He's like on this these incredible old ruins that um, Jorge designed, and he's searching for uh, the truth behind this legend of something called Umbrax, this living galaxy that essentially um, controls uh, the ultraviolet spectrum. Uh, something that he's heard about but that he isn't sure exists. And so it's all about him finding it. And it has this kind of narration about um, how uh, he believes that history is about control over, uh, uh, control over nature. We study the past to make sure we keep it in the past. And so part of the issue is about how he comes to embrace that darkness beneath. Uh, and right after the intro, you get Jon Stewart, who's already possessed by the ultraviolet spectrum, and that's why his constructs are even sort of made of of hate and guilt and shame and the feelings that we kind of sublimate, um, because right now he's in the grip. So, anyway, I don't want to spoil too much, but um, I really love this. Uh, I really love this arc, and 
I'm very, very, uh, very proud of what the artists are doing in particular, too. Um, and the whole book, just so you understand, the book is planned out over about um, almost 40 issues, 50 in total. Um, but, you know, each arc is succinct. We want you to feel like you can jump on at any point. That said, it is telling one big story about justice and doom. Um, and it has a very sort of large architecture, and it builds to something really huge. So very proud of it, very excited, and very, 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 above all, grateful to you guys for showing it such support. I saw the June numbers and that stuff, and not even the sales, honestly, just the enthusiasm online, the stuff that you've been saying about it. It really means the world to all of us. So I just wanted to say thank you um, sincerely. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Bye.